Today is October the 5th, 2019, and I thought I'd make a quick video on the new hex beam I have up. It's a mono band. It's the K4KIO. I believe I'm saying that right. It's up at about 35 feet, and it uh, has amazed me beyond what I expected it to do. I originally had it mounted right here on top of this on a, a little uh, telescoping pole like for TV antennas, and I had it telescoped up about 12 to 15 feet, somewhere in that range, I don't know exactly, probably about 12 feet. <clears throat> and on top of this one, I had a, uh, a rotatable dipole. I'll show you that dipole here in a minute. And I kept comparing the two, and uh, the dipole outperformed it when it was mounted uh, here on, on this uh, on this little mount every time. And so I was reluctant to put it up, but it performs phenomenally well. It it has surpassed my expectations. It really has. This thing right here in this video looks like my my tower is about to fall over to the right, but actually it's straight up and down. Anyway, uh, performs extremely well. I've got it pointed west right now, as I think you might be able to see in this video right here. I've got a, a, a dual core ballon up there at the top of it. Yeah, actually that came in pretty good, didn't it? Yeah, that's a ballon right there, one to one. Store bought one made by uh, Ballon Designs, I believe it is, uh, out, out, out here in Texas. The uh, I'm in El Paso. The uh, coax all the way down from here to the uh, so the radio is LMR 400 dB. It's exactly three wavelengths long. Since I only operate 20, I can do that. But anyway, yeah, mounted over here, mounted over here on this little mount, it, it just did not perform very well. Now, I've heard some people uh, say that theirs performs extremely well down low, but mine didn't. But, uh, wow, I'll have to show you. Uh, I'll have, I'll, I can go down and show you on the SDR just how phenomenal it really is. So. Uh, but, but while we're out here, let's go take a look at the um, at the uh, 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 rotatable dipole I had up there. By the way, I actually tried to move the rotor right here down inside the tower, but the rotor is bigger than the inside of the tower, so that's why I had to leave it that way. Okay, well here's the dipole taken down. You can see I've, I've pulled it apart. I'll pull the ends off of it because the, the length of it, of course, telescopes over this. I'm just going to show you the center part. I used that. Uh, I used exactly the same ballon on the uh, on the hex beam as I do on this. It's a dual core ballon. I feed it out the side to uh, get out here to one side of the element. The other side of the element. This is fiberglass insulated in the middle. I run full legal power, and I've never had any kind of arcing or anything strange happen to it. Actually, it's pretty solid. And uh, here are the other elements, as you can see. You know, you know how long a 20 meter dial dipole has to be, like 400 and something inches, like 32 feet. Well, anyway, the, I just wanted to show you what I had up there, and uh, I was actually quite pleased with it. I got uh, really good reports, 20 over all the time. Now let's go down and look at the uh, SDR uh, spectral display. Okay, I think this kind of tells to tell. This is a SDR play, spectral display of it of, uh, of 20 meters. The uh, California QSO party is going on right now. But I have never seen anything like this on the dipole. Wow, that's all I can say. Um, I mean, I, I could tune across here and you, and, you, and you could hear all these people on there, but uh, it brought this thing alive. As a matter of fact, I've had several QSOs lately and I do it in kind of a, oh well, sort of way, and I say, have you noticed that uh, 20 meters has uh, livened up and gotten a whole lot better lately? And the comments I get are like, well, uh, no, not really. You know, the sunspot cycles at a low, and you know, I kind of get that uh, that routine. Like, okay, well, thank you. And then I've, I've asked that a number of times, and, and the answers I get are, are, you know, no big deal. Well, it's a big deal here. I've never seen anything like that. And I'm getting it day after day after day. Today would be uh, actually the fourth day. About right now, we finished about four days ago. So there you go. I think it's worth it. Holy mackerel. Like I can say it's just a mono band. It's just one band, 20 meters. Uh, the equipment I use, I always like to show it off. 
Uh, this is the uh, beautiful KW M2A. We got a 51S1 receiver right next to it. And uh, here's the power supply for the KW M2A. I actually use this speaker for the 51S and uh, this little speaker over here for the uh, KWM2A. We've got a 30L1 right here that I use sometimes, not a whole lot. Of course a watt meter, everybody's got to have watt meters. I generally run about a thousand watts output and it comes out from uh, this big guy right here. This is my old college 30K1 built in 1947 that I have used a number of times and I run a um, 4CX1000 in it right now. It's actually ready. If I don't want to use the amplifier, I just want to bypass it, I just do this and then it's bypassed. So I'm running barefoot, so to speak, and when I want the amplifier online, I press that and when I key it up, the red light comes on over here. And then I have my other older S line stuff over here, the 32S1. The light is off here because I'm using the VFO out of the receiver. I'm using it in transceiver mode. I use these all this nail polish to uh, mark my wires and uh, where they plug into. Like I'll, you know, put a red blob on the wire and a red blob on where it plugs into, and that's the way I've uh, kept up with everything. This microphone right here has a uh, a condenser mic in it and a and a battery and uh, whoops, I'm picking it up here. And I used the old uh, potentiometer that uh, that came in this original uh, UG stand. I took the amplifier out, but that's a 5K potty and works great. I run the output of here, of this uh, condenser mic down here, and there's also a 9 volt battery under there, which was the original part of this stand. So this is a, um, a modified uh, D104, and everybody gives me great reports. This one over here is 100% original. Uh, this is a genuine, uh, non-modified, see, no amplifier. I've had this uh, stand since 1963. Different heads, of course. But anyway, and here's the rotor. Got it pointed west right now. Toward the California QSO party, but uh, uh, the gist of this uh, video is that right there. That is just amazing. So. If you've got a place to put up a hex beam over a dipole, ooh, I think you'll be surprised. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Good DX.